Hi guys, I have received a message from Hamza who says I have nothing to offer. <laughs> Yet he comes to my page, my Facebook page, and leaves a comment and then removes it again so nobody but me can see it and it does not become public. I can't reply as I am blocked on his page and it does not show up on mine. So I'll have to do it here and this way. Let's see what he has to say. Well, he starts off with an irrelevant statement, nonsensical as such, and what I would generally call typical Muslim inept formulation. Stop spamming, I know you are banned. <laughs> How useless is that? I mean, banned from what? From where? By whom? From heaven? By him? I call this typical vague and ambiguous language. He could have skipped it entirely, or he could have demonstrated the intellectual honesty he expects from others by saying, I banned you from my discussion page on Facebook because... Da -da -da -da. And then he could have added, I need to insult you, which is why I am writing this here. <laughs> but if you're reading this, I am afraid I, <laughs> I can't read this. <laughs> If, if I'm reading this, looks as though he watches too many movies. He says, I am insincere. How is quoting sources which contradict his claim being insincere? My current video is a different one than the one he is probably referring to. So why not say very clearly, your video XYZ is wrong because... Instead, I'm just told off that I am doing everything wrong without being told what the wrong actually is. Because I don't see how showing that Greek medicine was translated into Arabic before the 7th century by quoting historical sources and books written by scholars on the topic can be misquoted and misunderstood. Let me get personal for a minute. Man Get one quote, show how it relates to your claim, and then show what is wrong with it. Don't engage in this childish, blanket accusation mode you're in right now. You're making a fool out of yourself. Have you learned nothing at varsity? Here, come on. The, the process of first building a skeleton by using catchwords and then filling it in is actually a valid and highly recommended practice. But then this is not nature. In the real world, you get to do this, and it's recommended. Why not follow it? Then he carries on by saying, you produce a general ambiguous quote that mentions Syriac and Arabic. Ah, yeah, yeah. What nonsense. Yes, scholars show that Greek texts were indeed translated into the prominent languages of the era and the region. And those were Greek, Latin, Egyptian, Semitic languages and endless dialects. So yes, texts were translated into Syriac, which is a subset of Aramaic, and the emerging Arabic. What exactly is ambiguous about this? He says the first translation is in the 7th century and then says this is contested. What is contested and by whom? I have shown that Greek medicine and the Greek philosophers, as they were called at the time, influenced Arabic culture since the Stone Age. Arabs were following Greek medicine all along and when Galen punished his works it was quickly adapted by Arabs. And this is what I show by quoting historians who have found these texts and have reconstructed them chronologically. Now, in spite of all the evidence I have presented, he stubbornly stomps his feet with folded arms and declares about his version, this is a fact. And he declares my video a joke? You are using sophistry again to obviously prove that. This is superfluous. He's, he's, okay, he's learned a new word, sophistry which is a subtle, tricky, superficially plausible, false, deceptive reasoning or argumentation. Is Hamza showing what I'm doing where? Nope. Just blanket accusations and childish whining. Does he tell me what would be considered as sophistry or what to read? Nope. Is this an example of what most educated people apply today? Constructive criticism? Not really. Then he says, the, the other quotes you mentioned refer to Jandu Shapur. Didn't you read the essay that breaks down? And, uh, yes, yes. The essay. Which essay? What Hamza is referring to is a collection of claims and some quotes which he misinterprets as meaning no medical knowledge in Jandu Shapur at the time. When everybody, even his own quote, mentions the medical knowledge there. Now, Hamza is deluding himself by way of self-gratification and confirmation bias, by distorting the facts and then claiming he's made a point. 
No, Hamza, you have not. Live with it and your fanboys should keep you honest and check your claims before clicking on like indiscriminately. You have built a straw man. This is exactly why no one should engage with people like you. Shame on you. Uh, now he's going back to insult mode. Hamza does not really know how to address me. He can't use facts because he knows he does not have any and I do. He can't use any form of special pleading because he knows I will expose that. He can't use insults because that will achieve nothing. So he uses censorship when he's in a position to do so and a mixture of all tactics the rest of the time. Strawman? Me? Where? With what? By what? What is strange is that actually I am the one calling this entire discussion about what was translated when from what into what as being irrelevant and futile. I was actually working on a video showing the historical background of Islamic texts when I was so rudely interrupted by this little skirmish. If I transmit misinformation, take one, just one example and show me this is wrong because da 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 dum. But I suppose that is expecting too much. And to think that a year ago I had such high hopes for a fresh and new version of Muslim apologist as I had somehow seen an intelligent man with a knack for gripping presentations and enthusiasm. And sadly, yes, I have to admit it, I was wrong. Now he goes into, it is sad as you are creating barriers of people and uh, I'm arrogant, not nuanced. I don't believe this. I teach people in our dawah not to super emotional baggage on others, especially your actions are intellectual. Oh. Much of the same with blanket accusations without any substantiation or examples or proof. All I'm doing is pointing out the obvious lies and unwarranted claims. What do Muslims realistically expect from atheists? Should we abandon reality simply because some superstitious nonsense? Should I now deny gravity or evolution? Should I accept the explanation that some invisible force is holding our birds? or what Bernoulli tells me. Should I accept that an angel pushes clouds along, or that the wind is following isobaric gradients? How, when I am addressing specific points in his drivel he calls essay, he can still claim I have not read it, is beyond me, and I am unable to place it into a specific category of behavior. Is it specific denial or selective denial? No idea. Now we get you are in a position of responsibility as a special plea. I think he overestimates my level of influence. Okay, yes, I have quadrupled views and subscribers in a short time period, but I am not distributing or actively advertising my opinions. Hamza is. Hamza is paid for his essay. Is this piece of paper worth money? Would it persuade anyone who is not gullible or uncritical? If no, what is the point? If you generalize atheists, I think one will find that they lack belief in something without proof, which is exactly the opposite of what theists do. Now, why should atheists suddenly abandon this rational thinking approach when it comes to my videos? Theists, uh, uh, let's not go there. But l let me get personal again. Hamza, if you want to chat and discuss nonsensical statements, call me on Skype. I have given links for what I claim to show what I think and why I think so. I have then stated how this is relevant to your points and I have shown what is irrelevant to your points. I have told you in comments on your blog when it was still a blog, in videos and in comments what is wrong with your method and why. What more can I do? You don't want to accept or listen. You insist on pumping your moronic, primitive, egregious nonsense into unsuspecting, gullible Muslim brains. And you ask me whether I have any shame? Oh, no, sorry. You explicitly tell me, shame on you. What obnoxious audacity. You should be aware by now that you can't just barge the Quran into being accepted as reality. And you can't wriggle your way in either. So why in God's name don't you leave the Quran where it was a century ago, in the realm of religion? Let's take water. It is real, measurable and tangible. But if you believe that Neptune controls it, James Bond drove a car through it, Jesus walked on it and mermaids live in it, you are deluded and mixing fact with fiction. You live in a make-believe world and think movies are real. It might be comfortable and cozy, but it's not real and not honest. 
Now, if you look at this page, you will see the reason why at least 80% of the Earth's population laugh about these gullible Muslims. You will see all the stupidity and superstitious beliefs in one long list. That should be your target. Not people who use rational thinking every day and who don't need an invisible supernatural being to get them through the day. And then he says you need to realize this if you're a man of conscience. I mean, finally, to end your little rant with such pathos, such emotional pleading, I find horribly false and totally disingenuous. You are the one who has to believe that a God exists due to faith without evidence, let alone proof, and that the arguments you put forward in favor of a god or your favorite god are not even that. You have to believe that this very god, which does not even have any credible proof for its existence, authored a book, again without proof. You are the one who tells others that the moon was recently split in half and that a piece of steak can temporarily raise a corpse and that this is real and the truth. God's truth, and you appeal to my conscience. Oh, 